program with a compelling and moving story about digging deep within you and finding your personal value and worth. And, and I don't remember exactly the phrase you used, but what a way to end that program. And I'm just going to shift gears with the question, how is it possible that I can go on a seven-day trip and only bring five days worth of work? <laughs> <laughs> Big thoughts for the weekend. I've got a suggestion. Yes. Wash up. Hang them over your little, yeah, you just wash them. Susan said I should just turn them inside out. <laughs> no, um, yeah, day three of presentations and classes and things, uh, day five or six, I don't know how long we've been here, um, covered a lot of great stuff, had a lot of fun, I hope. Um, $100,000 haircutter, we start out with that thought of the day, so we, we, we look up today, which is February 7th, which is... Tammy's birthday, and we should have. It's Greg's birthday. Okay, this happens from time to time. February 7, day 38, with 327 days remaining in the year. Today's tip is take the 500 business card challenge. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> so um, we've already covered that. We talked about it during my second program, which is the one on, on generating new traffic and things like that. What's that? No, I didn't look ahead. I don't look ahead. And I know it's in. I know it's in there. I wrote the book. Uh, so what we do when we get in that situation is we find some nugget elsewhere in the room. So when's your birthday? Eight seven. Eight seven. August seven. Let's jump ahead to August seven because you can't plan and predict these things. August seven. All right. August seven, day two nineteen, with one hundred and forty six days remaining in the year. Ask your clients. And you know this is such a simple point. When I get into conversations with people about, I'm thinking of adjusting the hours of my shop, or the hours that I work during the week, or I'm thinking of adding a new service, or you know, I'm thinking of bringing on some other products within the JA line. What, what should I do? Which one should I pick? Don't ask me. Ask your customers. Does anybody use like SurveyMonkey to do simple surveys with their customers? Are you familiar with that? No. Look it up online, surveymonkey.com. In order to, you go online, you create a free account, it's totally free. There are paid versions, but you don't need the paid version. You can create on SurveyMonkey a 10 really? question survey, make up all your questions and everything, and then they give you a Holy URL, course. they give you a link. You use your uh, MailChimp or Constant Contact. Anybody yeah. use either of those platforms? You know what those are? This is where you take your mailing list. It's the kind of thing that the office uses with the new uh, JA Customer for Life platform. You guys use Monkey, right? Or not, yeah. but you guys use MailChimp. We use MailChimp. Yeah, MailChimp, Survey Monkey. you see a thing here. Um, and you can send emails out, or you can, you can do this in your shop. But to ask questions of your customers. You know, if you want to know what hours customers want to come for haircuts, ask your customers. Ask the people that are giving you money every single day, as opposed to scratching your head and throwing stuff against the wall. So August 7th, Ron's birthday specifically focuses on the notion of surveying your customers when you have questions and things like that. And I just referenced a couple of web-based platforms that are available to all of us absolutely free. Simply create an account and play with them. Now, as an example on SurveyMonkey, if you want to ask more than 10 questions, I don't think you should. Long surveys get a little tedious. But if you want to change, um, I think they let you do multiple choice. You can be yes, no, you can make up your choices and your answers and things like that. But there is a paid version of that that you can expand what you can do. You can plug in your logo and make your surveys fancy and things like that. But the free versions of platforms like this are so powerful and available to everybody. Um, so that was, that was the tip of the day for that. Um, in recapping what we've talked about, we started with my first presentation talking about the Cos Barber crossover opportunity. We talked about the idea of charging $5 more for every single men's haircut that you do. And in Gino's program this morning, again, he referenced price increases and he referenced the notion of adding value when you add that price increase as a way of mitigating or minimizing the resistance to it. Uh, but when you do more, be more, give more, you can freely and easily then Ask for more because you have provided more value, you are worth more. So we talked about that. We also talked tied to the crossover conversation of the idea of tying it into product. In my case, it was the, in our case, it was the shave cream, the after buzz, and the beard oil, that three-piece combo. We talked about the notion that if you're going to add that neck and sideburn cleanup service to your men's haircut, not only can you charge $5 more for every single male client coming through the door, but you can also potentially generate $50 or more per day. And that was predicated on the notion of five men's haircuts offering product to all five of them. And if half of them purchase half the product, 
So we're not talking pie in the sky, crazy, oh my God, if everybody bought everything numbers. We're talking about numbers that are very, very real for actual humans to achieve behind the chair. Uh, so more money for services and more money for products. That was really the focus of the first of our conversations. The next conversation, I believe it was yesterday, really focused on referrals. It was that new traffic conversation. The idea that those of us that have been in the business a long time or those of us that are very new to the business still need and still thrive and still grow on fresh blood, fresh uh, new people coming in the door like that. Uh, so finishing those two topics, anybody with questions or comments want to circle back or touch on any of those things? You get a day or two to think about it, chew on it, and you know, challenge me, fight with me, argue with me. Anybody? Anybody wants to fight? Come on. All right. What's that? I think he's going to come after mentally used electric. What, I, what a great question. If anybody didn't hear that one, what do you recommend for men who use electric razors? Remember, I'm in the old guy barber shop. You know, I haven't done a survey, but eight out of ten guys sitting in my chair probably on Coumadin. Uh, they're not using razor blades anymore. And there are a lot of really good uh, electric shaving tools out there, but all of a sudden we're not in a shave cream conversation anymore. But we're still in an after buzz conversation. It's still skin that can be taken care of. So, as I'm saying, anytime you're going to be not nice to skin, be nice to skin. You know, uh, Susan's in the back waving up that razor with the wire across it that is really designed to prevent you from cutting anybody. They're so very safe, they inspire a lot of confidence in people. I'm still a little, a little leery about somebody, you know, one of them, we always ask the question now when somebody books a face shave, because we still do traditional full lather face shaves, um, we'll ask the question, are you on a blood thinner? And if they, you know, and it's not uncommon, especially in an old guy barbershop, we'll have a woman come in with her dad or her grandpa who just got done with four or five days in a hospital, and he hasn't shaved, and, he's, and he needs a haircut, and he needs to feel good. You know how that whole thing goes. This is what we do with people. She brings him in, she goes, haircut and shave, and you know, I take one look at him, and I go, I'm going to take him down with a trimmer, and I'm going to take him down with an electric shaver, but I'm not going to blade shave him. And they're like, oh, no, that's fine. I totally get it. So we still have the opportunity to deliver the service. If you go online and you look up some of the really good, it's called a foil shaver. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as a box shaver. It's a little rectangular thing about yay big, a little bigger than a deck of cards. Wall makes one. Andis makes one. Um, the best one out there comes from a company called Caliber. If you look it up online, the company's name is Caliber, and the model is RPG. Uh, just the three letters, RPG. But it's a foil shaver. Um, that, that I use and many of us use uh, in the shop for a non-razor blade shave or face grooming service, if you will. It's also what we use for the guys that are going to skin if you're not blade shaving scalps. And don't try to hack through the long length of hair. Take it down with a clipper first, take it down with a trimmer after, then take it down with a flush. How does that do with that one shape of the razor that we just bought? Can you do some of those same things on the skin? I'm well, the razor that you just bought is the end result effect of that razor is exactly the same as a straight edge. The wire does not impede your ability to shave all the way down clean to the skin. A foil shaver is going to take you not quite as close. You remember the old, like the old Gillette ads where they showed you the lift and cut where the one blade lifted the hair and the next blade cut it off smooth and then the hair pulled down below the follicle? Well, if you had kinky curly hair, and a lot of, especially in through the neck and things like that, guys' hair tends to be curlier and they tend to get folliculitis, the razor bumps. That's because that hair was pulled a little bit for tension, snipped off and popped back into the follicle by just a little bit, and then the end of that hair shaft doesn't come straight up out of the follicle. Kind of turns a little bit to get those razor bumps. So there are certain places, me specifically, it's this side, not so much this side, uh, where I tend to be prone to the razor bumps and things like that, so you kind of want to be a little leery of that, and in those cases, the foil shaving tools are superb for that. Because a lot of, a lot of, um, and it's not an ethnic issue, I always like to remind people that, people used to say to me, hey, you ever cut black hair? And my answer would always be, I cut a lot of Chinese people. It's texture, it's texture. There are white people with kinky curly hair, and there are darker complected people with very straight hair. Our, our language, I think, needs to acknowledge that, that it's not a color issue, it's not a racial issue. It's a texture issue, but but uh, as a white guy, right in through here, I tend to get a lot of that. But the guys that are head shaving, you want to take them down with a foil instead of taking them down with a blade, because otherwise they tend to get some irritation. So What's the best for that? Uh, best for what? For the uh, after you shave your head, uh, lotion wise or uh, the after buzz is off. Uh, after buzz is awesome. Oh my God. After buzz. 
after buzz. You well, buzz it and after. It's my biggest time work out in the weather and all that, and mine gets real, real dry. Yeah, and guys that are wearing hard hats all day, guys that wear a ball cap all day, guys that are not wearing a cap and are out in the sun, if they work outdoors, their scalp is dry and it's peeling and it's itchy and it's cracking, the after buzz is perfect. He does too. Absolutely. Was there another hand that I said? That's a balding clipper. Yeah. A balding clipper is not going to take you down as close as a foil shaver. A, boil, a balding clipper is, you know, typically either the adjustable where the rear blade is really thin and you can scoot really close and you can cut really tight. Yeah, it'll take you down. Yeah, it'll take you down pretty close, but not as close as a foil shaver. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's the next element to the next level short. Anybody else? All right. What I wanted to talk about today. Um, and I, I made some notes, and I wrote out a program ahead of time, and it was all about building your JA downline and building your business. And I looked through my notes the other day, and I went, this is absolutely the wrong conversation for this group. Because it was a conversation, my original conversational plan was really much more suited to Chicago, Chicago. A conversation intended to be spoken to the vast majority of the people that are part of our group and our organization, and not the people here. The people here, you're here because you know how to play the game. You're here because either you're moving enough product to qualify for the trip, or you're here because you've earned it by being our number one producer, or our number one recruiter, or our number one web seller, or something. Why are we here? Who are we here? We are, we're the leaders, we're the example, we're the heroes, we're, and in some cases there's a few here who are aspiring to some of those levels. Great, we want you, we want to get you up on that group. So I kind of wanted to pivot or shift what I wanted to share, and I wanted to focus on the three things I think as leaders we want to be doing to enhance not only what happens within our universe within the business, but also those that are beneath us in our organization, within our downline, things like that. So I want to, and I'm just working off some notes, uh, the first thing on the list and this is one, you know, I have to drink a large glass of Kool-Aid on this one. We all need to target better. We need to make better choices about those individuals that we invite to come play with us. I have brought a great many people into our organization over the last several years who have purchased discovery kits, who have come to classes and things like that. I am not too proud to tell you that the vast majority of people that I have brought on board and introduced into our organization are not actively generating revenue for our group. They're not buying a lot of product every month. They're not playing the game at the level I might have hoped or at the level our organization would benefit. That's a reality. I would say I'm probably 90-10. One out of 10 people that I brought on board are producing for themselves, first and foremost, for me as their sponsor, and for our organization. I don't necessarily know that my numbers are all that bad relative to the entire organization. We, as an organization, need to be better at this. We need to target better. We need to make better choices. And, you know, at the end of the day, someone who comes on board with JA, who buys and uses a great deal of product, somebody who's passionate about hair color, who buys a boatload of hair color, that's great. We love them and we're happy to have them. Even if they never recruit somebody into a downline beneath them, that's all well and good. One of the coolest things to me about John Amico is there's choices about how you can play. Somebody who maybe doesn't do hair color but buys, uses, and sells a great deal of retail inventory within their business, great, we're happy to have them. There are people out there who maybe don't do hair color, maybe don't do a lot of retailing, but buy products like AfterBuzz or products like deep conditioners or products like Minerali Oil and use them in service delivery and service execution. They're benefiting themselves in a big way, they're benefiting me in a big way, they're benefiting the organization in a great way. So there's more than one way to play, but we need to target better. When it comes to targeting better, my notes from my original program was asking better questions. And I don't want to dig deep on any one of these. If somebody has questions, we can go there. But I want to give you an example of where my head was at in the idea of asking better questions. What are you doing to make more money this year from last year within your business? Good Great conversation, starting question with somebody in the end. What are you doing different this year? Not, hey, I got something you could do different, because that's my plan. What are you doing different? You may find out when you ask that question of people, question of people oh, I don't really know what I'm doing different. Well, that's a doorway into introducing yourself in the JA opportunity. 
But what are you doing different? Um, I got a great second follow-up question. Uh, good questions are followed by good follow-up questions. What are you doing in your business to make more money? What are you doing different this year from last to make more money? That's the initial question. The follow-up is, what would you do if that worked? What would you do if what you did actually worked? That's more of a personal question. What would you do with the money? How would it impact your business? How would it change what your business can be for yourself and your customers? Kind of thought provoking, but it really opens the doorway into, when I used to sell hair care product for a hair care product manufacturer, do you know what my first question I would ask a salon owner when I met them? And it was a great question. Somebody turned me on, I didn't come up with this on my own, I'm not that smart. When I would meet a salon owner for the first time as the national sales manager for a hair care product company, my first question I would ask them in our first meeting was, tell me, when do you want to sell your business? And that, hmm, that was exactly the answer I got from people. They went, hmm. And they would go, how did you know I want to sell? Well, you own a business. You've been at it for more than a year. You want to sell it. Maybe now, maybe in a decade, maybe in three. You know, it's not that often that people in our business hand businesses down to the next generation. It's not really kind of how it works too much, unless you're an amigo. But um, the reality is, people that own hair salons and businesses that are successful in the business, they have an end game. And people would say, why do you ask me that? And I said, well, when it comes time to sell your business, the value of your business will determine, you know, the size of the check that someone writes you and the size and the depth and breadth and the success of your take-home product business will substantially impact what your business is worth. If you're doing $300,000 a year in take-home hair care product, your business is more valuable to a potential buyer. So if I can, <laughs> this was the pitch, if I can help you build, grow, and develop a thriving retail business, because you know when you sell a hair salon, there's no guarantee any of the operators are staying. What are you really selling? Used furniture? Yeah, leasehold value because it's been doing hair in this little box in this little strip mall for 35 years. So what would you do if it worked? Next question. What do you want to do this year for your own personal growth and development? Obviously, there's an undercurrent there about education. More business that's been built on quality education but it opens that doorway, it opens that gateway. It also very revealing. If I say to someone, what do you want to do this year for your own personal growth and development? If somebody looks at me and goes, yeah, nothing. Target better, move on. If that, somebody doesn't have hopes, dreams, goals, and aspirations, we probably shouldn't be spending time talking to them. What do you want to do this year? I said, what do you want to do this year for your own personal growth and development? Here's an interesting one. I think this cuts right to, can I really be valuable to you? What is your average ticket relative to your haircut price? The answer to that question tells me a great deal about what's going on in your head and your business. What is your average ticket relative to your haircut price? If I am talking to someone whose salon charges $24 for a haircut, the answer to that question tells me a great deal about them. Many times if I say, what's your average ticket relative to your haircut price? The answer I get from people is, well, I don't know. That tells me a lot about where they are in terms of the financial management of their business. But if I ask somebody, what's your, haircut, what's your average ticket relative to your haircut price? And they say, well, my haircut's $24 and my average ticket is 30 Okay, now I know. They're selling some add-on services. They're selling some take-home hair care product. They're not nearly where they could be, and they've got a lot of room to grow, and they understand what that question really means. This is somebody I want to have a cup of coffee with because this is somebody I can probably help. But if they go, average ticket, what do you mean by that? Can we educate that person? Potentially. Yes. Is it going to be harder to push that rock up that hill? Yes. Probably. Last one I have on my list, and it, it, this one circles back to some of the personal issues. What will make you happy this year? You know, somebody looks at you and go, I, I just need a vacation. I can help you. Here we are. <laughs> I can help you. Everybody needs six days in Cancun with their friends. Yeah. Absolutely. I can help you. Okay? <laughs> but what will make you happy this year? It's an interesting door-opening question. It's not about how much shampoo can you sell. 
Have you ever heard of John Amico? We'll get to that. We'll get to that down the road. So we need to target better. Um, and that was kind of what that conversation was all about. And, and let's continue these. Uh, a couple of other things uh, under targeting better. Look for people like you. Look for people like you. Look for people with whom you have kinship. I don't have any trouble talking to barbers. I have a cause license. I got a barber license later. I've been cutting men's hair for years. It's easy for me to strike up conversation and talk to barbers. Look for people like you with whom there'll be commonality and, and easy conversation starting and progress. What's the next one on the list? Anybody want to guess? Look for people not like you. Okay? Look for people not like you. Some of my greatest opportunities to grow my downline and build business for me in our business will be talking to people who specialize in hair color. Hair color is so extraordinarily lucrative to beauty industry professionals, to our system, and to our organization. Yeah, I, I got hair color education. Yeah, I've done hair color. It's not my wheelhouse. But boy, there's huge opportunity in people that don't look anything like I look in this business. Last thing I have on that list is ask better questions. And that was the first thing we covered under that topic. Anybody got anything on that before we move on? So number one is target better. Yes? How do you figure out your average ticket? And do you integrate the retail into your average ticket? Or okay. do you separate the retail from your service tickets? Because we can't like separate. The answer is yes. The answer is yes to all of the above. Okay. Two things. Simple average ticket is total revenue for a period of time. You can do it by a day, a week, a month, whatever you want. If you're a salon owner with multiple operators, you can do it for the entire business. You can do it by individual chair. You can, and I think you should crunch it a number of different ways. It's like looking at a piece of sculpture from different angles. You see things differently. So it's total revenue divided by headcount. That's as simple as you can make it. Total revenue. Now, if you choose to back out take home, then what you can end up with is average service ticket, average take home ticket. You can have two different numbers there. And I think that might be valuable. I know we know it's valuable in, in meeting with people. I think as an owner, manager, somebody, if you have any level of responsibility for other humans who play our game, I think we need to act on that responsibility by having very short meetings with people every single day. When they come walking in, throw their purse in the back room and grab their smock, and literally two minutes of, what's going on today? What's our big goal for today? I think we have a responsibility to meet with people weekly. That meeting is going to be a little bit longer to look at last week's numbers and go, you know, to, I love this expression, to know your numbers is to grow your numbers. And the companion to that is, that which gets measured gets improved. When you walk up to somebody and go, what's your rate of occupancy? If they don't know their rate of occupancy, odds are it's not climbing. The flip side of that is an individual who knows their average ticket grows their average ticket. Because just by being aware of what the number is, you ever been, you ever been tired at the end of the day? You ever had a day when you're tired? And man, I'm, I'm, I was busy. Man, I was busy. Oh, I was so busy today. And you count up the money and there's not that much money there? Busy is not a, uh, not, maybe you're tired because you're on the bed late. You know, maybe you're tired because you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe you're tired because some people just suck the life out of you. <laughs> and maybe you're tired because when you count it up at the end of the day, it's an enormous pile. It's a different kind of tired. That's a fun kind of tired. But there's more than one way to calc it. I'm happy to sit down with you anytime and run you through various scenarios for doing that. Meet with people daily. Meet with people weekly. Meet with people monthly, quarterly, and annually. You as an owner or manager, and I tell this to people all the time, I don't wish this upon anybody, but I've got to say it this way. We are all going home like tomorrow. And those of us that, you know, except Denise who lives in Florida. If you own a business, the best thing that can happen to you tomorrow is when you get off the plane at O'Hare and you walk out the door at baggage claim, you slip on the ground and you break your elbow. Literally, that's the best thing that could happen to your business. Because if it did happen to you, the next six months, you would experience more growth in your business than you ever had. We all believe we're going to lead by example. If I want people to cut more hair, I will cut more hair. It just doesn't work anymore. If you want people to, be, to grow and to develop, you have to invest in growth and development of people. Leading by example, I'm going to just do one more really good haircut. They just get pissed off at you. Hey, he's doing more haircuts. No. Put your time, effort, and energy. If you couldn't cut hair, what could you do to grow your business? That's that challenge. I say that all the time. 
Question. I just had a suggestion when you were talking about numbers, knowing your numbers. We have a whiteboard in our break room where everybody's at. So we have every morning we sit, we know what the daily numbers are, retail service, what the monthly goal is. And if you weren't there in the morning, somebody in the morning does the afternoon girls. Yep. And that which gets measured gets improved. To know your numbers is to grow your numbers. You're posting it on the wall. I'm going to go so far as to say today, post it on the wall, take a picture of it with your phone, and put it in your company's group text and send a picture of it to everybody with a nice little uplifting, cheerful, welcome to Wednesday message because they're not all looking at the board. You know, the board's been there every day and we stop seeing it kind of thing. We don't see the dirt. We don't see the board. Take a picture of that board and text it to them. And by the way, and, and, and have a huddle, with, and that's if you're not doing that, but not everybody starts at the same time, people come and go, the huddle doesn't always work. And you know, the other thing is, make it mandatory that when you receive the text, you're required to reply. Yes. Even if you say things like, I'm alive, you know, or thumbs up, or a little emoji of some kind, that's your, my way of knowing that you're still alive and you'll be here at 2.30 this afternoon. Like Can you're I just to. add something? Sure. If, if you're not using the John Miko Salon software, and I, you know, I mean, we're all here because of John, right? But when I started using it, I had no clue what he was even talking about. I sat through one of his clips and I'm like, oh my God, I probably don't. A lot of people have no clue what I'm talking about. No, I'm serious. Ah. I, I really was like, oh, I need to get better at the numbers. And the salon software, it literally takes like three minutes. You can pull everything he's saying from the back office of your salon software. So if you're not good with it, like you should really get into it. Yeah. Okay. This ties into point two. Yeah. Well, something. you know, just one thing is that it, it's one thing to have the software. Um, it's another thing to implement it. Yeah. And, you know, in every football game, the coach, before they go out, he has a huddle. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is they all come back in at halftime and they have to regroup yep. because the numbers are on the board. And if you don't know your numbers in your career, you're not a true professional. And the speed of the team is based on the speed of the leadership. So leadership has to get control of it, and they have to be dedicated to see their organization grow. Now, for example, I'm in the school. We still conduct rallies every Thursday for almost two hours, whether I'm there or not. And that's like our huddle. And we praise and recognize students that have gotten 90% and above in attendance. We praise them for certain kinds of tests that they have taken. And then we regroup. And we always have a guest speaker that comes. I mean, sometimes I have Steve Harvey. Other times I have Denzel Washington. Everyone, uh, every now and then, oh, yeah, by the way, they're not actually appearing in the school, but they're in the school. <laughs> because I have them on the big screen TV. And these are all messages of how to become successful. Because you know what, you're not born, as you know, with mom and dad that are giving you maybe all the advice that you want to listen to because you know you think they're dumb until you're 21. And so anyway, I just want to get back to leadership. I mean, that's what this is all about. And that's what you guys are all about. You've been able to come here because you're leaders. But I will tell you, many of the people out there, they're just going through their daily efforts as owners, and it's kind of like an autopilot. Remember what you know, Gino had said just a minute ago about, you know, you get to a certain point, and then, you know, are you really up at that top, or are you somewhere in between it? So in, in, in the advice that Ivan is giving you, it's how to work with the people that are leaders under you to be able to get them to duplicate your efforts. And whether it's for JA products or it's for the revenue stream or for whatever it is, you've got to analyze it, as he said. And, you know, there are people, many, many people that are not like you. You just happen to be more disciplined. You know, because what does it take? It takes discipline to be in the game. Right. Doesn't it? Yeah. Right? Otherwise, you don't show up for practice. You know, you're not getting in the game. And they got to get on the rung. The rung is the first rung in that ladder is becoming a member. And the second rung of that ladder is starting to get members. Third rung of that ladder is becoming educators. Fourth rung of that ladder is true leadership. And then the fifth rung of the ladder is hanging out with Ivan at the bar. I mean, because, because, yeah, because you know, you do. You get an opportunity to hang out with these big guys. Right? So, so I would just say, think about the people in your organization. Think about how you can help them. And they need to be led. And then once they, once they are led, they may mirror your leadership. And that's what you want. That's where we're going next.
Absolutely. Next one up here is coach. Better. When we have made good choices, if we have been effective at targeting better, we have better material to work with, if you will, coach better. And there's three things I think we need to do for success at that coaching better level. And it's, you know, we model this behavior. If you weren't modeling this behavior, you wouldn't be in the room. You wouldn't hear my voice right now. We know these things to do. We do them very well. But these are the three things people need to do. Number one, they need to buy. They need to hit their 100 every month consistently without fail. They need to buy product. At the end of the day, none of this happens until somebody orders a bottle of stuff. And let's not misunderstand that bottom line that's the, on which our planet spins. They need to buy. They need to hit their numbers. Tied to their numbers, please understand, and a couple of years ago when I made the decision to kind of dig in deep with this organization and, and play along, it took me a while to get it. I've been hanging around two decades, so you know, it took 18 <laughs> years for me to wake up. But hey, whatever. But I started spending a great deal of time studying, reading, learning from some of the world's greatest in multi-level marketing. One of the things I came across was the fact, interesting piece of information. If an individual joins, signs up, buys a discovery kit is our language. If an individual buys a discovery kit, joins a multi-level marketing organization, if they earn $1 in their first month, they are 10 times more likely to still be involved with the organization five years later. If they earn a dollar in the first month, your customer, your prospect, your new member, your sign up, call it whatever you want, absolutely must earn a dollar month one. That will come from placing an order beyond their discovery kit. We have packages, we have bundles, we have discounts to support those things. You must hand hold them through their first purchase within the first 30 days so they get a check. This must be real and tangible. Flip side, an individual signs up and joins a multi-level marketing organization. This is not just in our world. This is all multi-level marketing throughout the world. An individual signs up and joins a multi-level marketing organization to participate in this great dream of beach money. If they do not earn a dollar month one, they're 100% more likely to be gone at the end of the first year. That first month, that first dollar, that first taste of, pardon me, holy shit, this works. <laughs> Does it work? It works. It works. They got to taste it. They got to taste it. And, and, and it's the taste of money, nothing else. So we want to model that. Number one, they need to order. They need to spend money. They need to buy. They need to hit their hundred. Number two, they need to use the product. It doesn't do any good. We are not one of those organizations that does what we call front end loading, where somebody has a garage full of leggings that no one wants. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Okay, these people have gotten an incredible amount of bad press and bad mojo for front end loading. It's a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks. If you're not capable of doing a couple of conditioning treatments, a couple of color services, you were a bad prospect. Target better, remember that part? We want people who can play with us, but they need to buy and they need to use. You know, Chris was passing around yesterday. I saw it. I got to stick my hand in a jar. It said, I think it said uh, Casablanca oil hair mask or something. It's a new product we know nothing about, I know nothing about. All I know is, I don't care how big that jar is, it's not very expensive and it probably earns you 10 times the cost of the jar <laughs> by using it to deliver services behind the chair. So they gotta buy and they gotta use. And last on the list, they gotta buy, they gotta use, and what's the third one? Anybody wanna tell me? I shouldn't have even needed to look. They gotta buy product, they gotta use product, and they have to sell. to sell. Thank you very much. We all know that. Not too much there to dwell on. And when we talk about selling, the John Amico catalog, and I don't just necessarily mean the physical paper catalog, but we'll come to Chicago, Chicago, and walk into the mall, walk into the room and look around. It is dizzying how much stuff you can't sell all of it. I don't even think we want you to buy all of it. I focus on what I call the core item concept. Johnny's laughing. What do you mean? We want them to buy all of it. It's not that I look. No, no, it, it's not right. I mean, I work in a little barber shop. Do you really think there's a lot of opportunity for me to purchase and subsequently sell uh, Vitashine shampoo and conditioner? Not in my wheelhouse. But if I can't make, I mean, After Buzz, for God's sakes, my name's on the bottle. If I can't make After Buzz shave cream, any of the M products, if I can't make that stuff go away, I'm a bad prospect. Own it. 
It is what it is. They gotta buy, they gotta use, and they gotta sell. We have no number one, we wouldn't be in this room if we weren't already doing that. However, is there anybody in this room who wants to raise their hand and say they couldn't buy more, sell more, and use more? We all can continue yes. to grow from whatever <coughs> point we're at. There's opportunity. So there's opportunity to model that behavior, and there's opportunity to train, teach, and support that behavior. So we're going to target better. When we are effective at targeting better, the ones we get, we're going to coach them better. If we're effective at coaching them to buy, use, and sell, the world goes around and everything's happy. Last on the list here is support better. And I'm not going to spell it all out. You know what it is. Support better. Um, I don't, I, I'm not bragging. Because the things I'm doing, I'll admit, don't all work, okay? But I'm doing a lot of things. Denise, who's one of the active members of my group and team, will tell you she regularly accuses me of being too many places trying to do too many things. But I want to share with you guys quickly a list of some of the things that I do within my organization and community. Some work better than others, and my <coughs> defense when Denise is kind of attacking me over this is, I always use as an example my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law lives half a year in Florida, half a year in Chicago, comes and goes back and forth. My mother-in-law has a hair salon in each location. My mother-in-law, I mean, she's not in the room, she's not going to be upset, colors her hair, okay? And she gets a manicure, and she gets her hair cut, and she gets a weekly shampoo blow dry. My mother-in-law spends an incredible amount of money at two beauty salons on either end of our country. My mother-in-law is a great client for somebody. If you wanted to advertise, market, and promote to my mother-in-law, you would hope to have my mother-in-law as your customer. If you are tweeting, she will never hear you. She's not on Twitter. She reads the local community newspaper, and she starts with the obituaries. But that's who she is demographically. In order to talk to that client, you'd have to advertise in the local community newspaper. We see especially younger people in our industry, they're all wound up on social media. I alluded to this earlier in my presentation earlier in the week. Social media is not going away, but it's evolving and it's changing and it's moving rapidly. And it's a target that for many of us, especially those of us that have fewer years left in our career than in front of us, it's hard to figure out how do we play in that arena because it's changing so much and it's not so instinctive for us. But um, you need to talk to people where they are. So in my case, in supporting my group, the couple things I have on my list, um, I have a John Amico team page on Facebook. I'm constantly posting there. Uh, John was talking about Kitty, was on hers today. I know Rhonda's got one, I'm on that one, I'm on Kitty's one. Uh, John Amico has one. There are people that are in my group that are not members of my downline. It's, you, know, you have to be invited in. If you put a request, <coughs> I'll let you in. I'm the gatekeeper, but I'm not that tiny gatekeeper on it. But for those that play on Facebook, I have a Facebook group. I post in there. I communicate in there. Members of our group post in there. It's a place for us to gather. It's a virtual educational classroom. If you don't have one of these to support your downline, it's worth thinking about. Uh, the next one, of course, is the ability to email through the JA system, through your website, using the contact organizer to do emails there. I am not real good about doing that real consistently, but when I remember, I go, oh, I should send an email out through that, I have used it. It took me a little while to learn how to include a picture. It took me a little while to learn how to include a link. Uh, these are skills that we will be, who would be the best person within the organization for somebody to reach out to and contact if they wanted a more comprehensive understanding of how to use the contact organizer who's on the website. I would say most likely their um, their EC, their educational coordinator, uh, Chris would be a good person, and also okay. the uh, Chris. Can. Okay, Chris or Chris, <laughs> just Chris. Chris. <laughs> Great, Chris. Um, because we can all use that a little bit better. Texting, um, using texting. To, texting is a really great way to kind of say to people, I'm out here, I'm alive, I remember you, you know, just that touch point. I don't think we have big, meaningful conversations with people, but quick texts, not group texts, but quick texts to individuals. It is very personal, even though it's high tech and not high touch. Um, texting is a great tool to use to just keep in touch with people like that. Um, the next one, I'm going to go as old school as you possibly can. Pick up the telephone. Simply call people. People still answer the phone. The phones are not millennials. They still pick it up when it rings. 
and you could actually talk to people. And I think in the, the, with the right individual, with certain people, that phone call even carries more meaning. Um, one thing I do, many of you might be aware of it, if you're not, um, I have an online, I use a platform called Zoom, I have an online team meeting every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. I post the link to be shared within the community. You click on it, you join in on the meeting. We have a core group of people that participate in that meeting every single week. We did that meeting Wednesday night from Cancun. Maggie and Denise were with me on screen. They're usually on the other side of the camera. But, and we got together with a group of our people from our organization, kind of let them know what they were missing, kind of encouraged them. I, I gave them the information on next year's cruise, kind of got that opportunity to do that. But you can see people, you can hear people. Again, my account on Zoom, I have the free unpaid platform. I use it for nothing. I'm not using the paid platform. <coughs> if anybody would want a tutorial to kind of get run through how it all works and everything, I'm happy to spend a few minutes with you to share it with you and let you know what it is. But that's a regularly scheduled weekly meeting. Used to be 9 o'clock, but the East Coast folks were too tired, so we moved it to 8 o'clock so that it's 9 o'clock on the East Coast and 7 o'clock on the West Coast, or 6 o'clock, so that everybody can participate. Um, next up on there, we talked about texting. I use a platform called GroupMe. Group me is group texting. Some of us have used this in the context of maybe your kid's soccer team or other organizations that you're a member of, but it's a text group where it creates one constant stream of communication. Anyone in the group can text. Anyone in the group can like a comment. Anyone in the group can participate, but you have to invite people specifically into your little text group. Is that similar to Slack? There's other platforms, yeah, Slack might be another platform like that. It's, this one's called Groupie. It's a free, again, free app on iOS and Android. Um, everybody can play with it. And by the way, some of your participants, because I know some of mine do this, they don't want to download the GroupMe app. When you send them an invite, they can choose to receive the GroupMe texts in their regular text stream. So people can participate even if they haven't added the app itself to their uh, program. Uh, Facebook page I already mentioned, and um, lastly is classes, actually doing education. Has anybody here ever told an employee how to answer the phone in your shop? Yes. Has anybody ever done Raise your hand if you've told an employee, this is how we answer the phone. Yes. Okay, you're an educator. <laughs> if you've done that, you're an educator. <laughs> You don't have to be blessed, anointed, or appointed, or somebody doesn't have to tell you you're an educator to be educated. You're educating your team members every single day. As soon as you decide you want to build a downline within our organization, you've accepted the mantle and the responsibility of education. Use it. Take advantage of it. Question, I had a, a, a right out of cosmetology school, new designer. Uh, this is probably about 10 years ago. And I heard her answer my phone. And she said, Thank you for choosing Queen's Parlor. This is Ashley. How may I help you? And I thought, oh, Ashley, that was so sweet. Because some of my other gals just say Queen's Parlor. <laughs> you know? But I just thought, you know what? And I love that. So I just told everybody, I said, OK, this is our new verb. New company policy. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for choosing Queen's Parlor. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But as soon as you train somebody to do that, you are officially an educator. Questions about any of these things? Anybody, anything? All right, well, as always, once again, it is, it's always an honor to be invited to get up in front of you guys and share a little bit about what I know and a little bit about what I do. We've got, we've got a party tonight, we've got a photo, we've got one more presenter coming up. Um, let's take advantage of the remaining time that we have. If I can be helpful, find me. Um, I'll probably be near water later today. Uh, let's have that conversation. In a bottle. <laughs> 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 <laughs>